Good morning. Let's look at the speedway out at IMS on Tuesday morning. It is a weather impact alert day because of that intense heat that we are all going to feel no matter where you are this morning. We're glad that you're waking up with us here on 13 Sunrise. Yeah, hot blooded. You definitely <laughs> might be this morning for yeah. sure. We're always bundled up in blankets and stuff up here in the studios in the morning because we're always so cold, but not the last mm. couple of days around here. And I don't think it's going to hit anyone uh, unless you're spending too much time outdoors. You know, and this is the time of year when and um, usually the 90 degree days come to an end, but we've had uh, this will be the fourth and we got five, six, maybe three more uh, to add to this, but then it's going to be over, right? Okay. So what we want to do in this weather impact alert day is just let you know, hey, how's the best way to to get through this day and, and not have it bring you down too much because of the oppressive heat and humidity that we're going to start feeling 74 right now, 73 in Carmel and also in Fishers at 75 in Shelbyville, 68 uh, in Newcastle. And my goodness, look at that cool air in Richmond this morning, 66 for a high there in Wayne County. OK, this is a look at the excessive heat watch. The only difference between this being laid out yesterday for us today and yesterday was the addition of this excessive heat warning. This would be Peru and Logansport all the way up to South Bend. Of course, if you're traveling into Illinois, they have an excessive heat warning too. Now here we're expecting expecting that heat index to be between 100 and 105 could be higher than that in our northern counties. Thus the warning, but you'll see that this does cover much of Ohio, Michigan, Indiana, Illinois and uh, the eastern part of Missouri. Now our heat stress the next few days is going to be pretty high compared to what we've used to. We call it a moderate heat stress. That's today and basically through Thursday. Then we'll back off a lot as we go into the weekend. So today we're going to have a high of 95 tomorrow. Remember tomorrow you're going to hear the roar of the engines out at Lucas Oil Raceway Park with the NHRA US Nationals and uh, our drag racing queen here, Lindsay Monroe. That's a hot one to be out on the track tomorrow. Yeah, I think I might wait till the weekend. There you go. Check that's that out. Be great. Yeah, weekend looks fantastic, but we got to get there first. And you have to get somewhere this morning, and you're out on the west side. You might run into some construction. Here's a live look over at 465 at 10th Street. On the west side of town, noticing that we do have two travel lanes that are currently blocked due to construction in the zone. Also, this ramp on the 465 northbound off of 10th Street will remain closed today and even possibly tomorrow morning with this heat we've got around. Wouldn't be surprised if uh, weather impacts construction work in this zone and that might get extended a little longer. So just be prepared between Washington Street and 10th Street. We've got two of those travel lanes as well as the on ramps to 465 northbound that are set to remain closed at least for the next couple of days. If you are trying to get on 465 north out on the west side, you can either utilize Sam Jones Expressway that on ramp there or Crawfordsville Road. As of right now, this is not causing a big delay, but I do anticipate that number growing only a one minute slowdown on 465 North. Lindsay, thank you. Well, this morning, Metro Police are investigating a double shooting that happened on the northeast side last night that left one man dead and a child critically injured. The shooting happened at a strip mall last night. Matthew Foltz is live at that location this morning with the latest on what we've learned overnight. Good morning, Matthew. Good morning to you both. Metro police telling us that that man and child were both shot inside their car here at this parking lot behind me at this strip mall near the intersection of 75th and Shadeland. And this morning, we're still working to learn the condition of the child that was transported to the hospital. Now, Metro police telling us this shooting happened sometime after 9 p.m. last night. We're told an off-duty Lawrence police officer found the man and child and worked with medics to perform CPR at the scene. Both were taken to the hospital in critical condition. That's ultimately where the man later died. And it's a scene police are now calling unfortunate as well as uncalled for. Um, it's certainly frustrating. I should not have to be here speaking with you about a child shot, let alone anybody shot for that matter. Um, I don't know that you know the, the, the toll that you've taken um, not only on this community, but on our city. Um, we're going to do everything that we can to hold you responsible. 
And this morning, we're still working to learn the name of the man killed, how the child is doing, as well as what exactly led up to this shooting. Meanwhile, police are hoping and asking that if anyone saw or seen, heard anything, to give them a call. That's definitely going to be important into them solving this case. Meanwhile, Julia and Julia coming up at 630. You'll hear from one man who was working nearby when this shooting happened. He actually described some of the moments that happened. That's coming up at 630. Yeah, tro so troubling. So many children have been injured by guns recently. Thank you. Well, investigators have now identified the man that was shot and killed by SWAT officers at a Lawrence motel. Now, the Marion County coroner says 40 year old Contrail Small is the one who was shot on the northeast side near Pendleton Pike and Post Road Friday morning. Officers were at that motel serving a search warrant. IMPD tells us they were there to find a man known to be armed and dangerous and in possession of drugs. Well, this is not the first time police have responded to that Park Terrace motel. Police records show more than 130 calls to that address since 2020, many for warrants, overdoses, death investigations or disturbances. We reached out to the motel management, but no one was available for comment. Well, people walking the trails here in Indianapolis are being encouraged to be on high alert after two women were attacked. One man says that his wife was one of several women attacked on the Fall Creek Trail within weeks of each other. See a New Yorker is following this story this morning and there is now a warning from police. Good morning, see ya. Good morning, Julia. Good morning, Julia. Yes, Metro Police are urging people to be vigilant at all times, especially when you're walking or biking on these trails. Now, we talked with a man who did not want to be identified on camera. He tells 13 News that his wife was attacked by a man with a combat knife about three weeks ago. The attack happening in broad daylight while she was walking along Fall Creek Trail. He says the man forced his wife to walk along the trail as other people were walking by and he says it was a young kid on a bike that stopped to help her. Three weeks later, the man said the same thing happened to another woman also in the middle of the day. IMPD says they are aware of the incidents and they need the public to stay on high alert. Keep your head on a swivel, so to speak. Um, it's easy to get distracted, especially if you're running the trail and you got your music in, but just be mindful to keep your eyes up, look around as well. Um, and so we ask you just to plan ahead and to let a family or friend know if you're going to be somewhere and it never hurts to be in a group if you have that opportunity as well. IMPD says they also want people to, if you see something, say something. Don't be afraid to contact an officer if something is strange. Now, coming up on sunrise at 530, hear from those who frequent these trails. Reporting in downtown Indy, Sia New Yorker, 13 News. Thank you, Sia. You know you don't have to plead guilty to anything today? Yes, sir. I'm aware of that. It's your choice? Yes, sir. You're pleading guilty because you committed these crimes? Yes, sir. There you have former Indiana sheriff now agreeing to plead guilty to dozens of felony charges. Jamie Knoll has been under investigation for more than two years, accused of stealing millions of dollars in local money for personal use. Now, if the judge accepts that deal, Knoll will serve 15 years in prison with three years probation. He would also have to pay restitution to some of the groups he's accused of stealing from. We're learning more this morning about a fifth grade student who brought a gun on a school bus in Avon. The gun wasn't loaded, but the student had ammunition in their backpack. Avon Schools tells 13 News the student never used the gun to threaten anyone. School leaders say that other students reported that situation to a teacher and then found it in the student's locker at Avon Intermediate School East. The school is for fifth and sixth grade students. The school hasn't released how that student will be punished, but policy says that the student can be suspended for 10 days and expelled for at least a year. The Hendricks County prosecutor is also looking into the case. Lynn Sports this morning, the Indiana Fever beating the Atlanta Dream 84 to 79 last night in front of a sold out crowd in Atlanta. There was a bit of a scare though early in the game for Fever guard Caitlin Clark after she twisted her ankle in the first quarter. So she was down on the court for some time before being able to walk back to the bench eventually. So from there, 
She did get back in the game, and the Fever were able to mount a 30-point second quarter and take a comfortable lead into halftime. But the Dream, they came back, keeping it really close, rallying in the final minutes. It did take a couple of missed three-pointers and solid defense to secure that victory, though, for the Fever. This team's young, has a lot of young talent, and uh, I feel like we're just starting to put, put it together a little bit. So, um, you know, hopefully that continues to come along. Clark finished with 19. Kelsey Mitchell tied a season high at 29. The Fever are back at Gamebridge tomorrow night to take on the Connecticut Sun. Tip-off is at 7 o'clock. Well, this morning, concerns brewing over a possible cyber attack at a major airport. What experts say this could mean for your Labor Day travel plans. And tensions rising in Ukraine as Russia ramps up its attacks on the capital city. The damage caused in a massive aerial attack. Good morning, Chuck. Hey, good morning, Julia. It's 610, and I know most of us are on the way to work or school today, but if you're fortunate enough on this impact alert day to have a chance to get out on a boat, do it this morning. We're in the 80s this morning. We hit 90 at the noon hour and then a high of 95 with a heat index over 100. Your forecast is coming up.